hear anything but okay. i am wearing a hat again as usual how about is that better? yeah 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 perfect i think your mic was on well during the intro music oh Isn't good thing exciting? i didn't what did, what did we say something funny uh, we didn't say anything at all <laughs> i was completely preoccupied with my phone and you were preoccupied with getting the show on the air so all right that sounds good now we're That's on great let me just shuffle through my little notebook here. All right, and get turn, to the right page. Turn you up so I can just hear exactly what you're saying. Ah, uh, oh, there's okay. okay. There, good. That's good. Hello. Hi, you guys have tuned in to Eleventh Hour Radio on Royalton Community Radio. We come to you live every Friday at eleven a.m. WFVRLP, South Royalton, Vermont, ninety-six point five. That's Christina Stakos. I'm Emily Howe. There, now we don't have to worry about introducing our show. Yeah, that was great. Wow. And we did it within the first... What the Technically, I think the rules are that we're supposed to say all that stuff within the first 30 seconds, right? And then I think we're supposed to say it again in the last 30 seconds. Yeah. We never do it. No. Bad slacker DJs. Slacker, slacker, slacker. Yes. <sighs> okay. Sorry, I'm on kind of a... I'm in another realm still a little bit yeah it's very very uh icy out there and it's squeaky the I, snow is squeaky today. i wrote on our on our little uh promo thing that we put up on facebook every day every friday before i wrote that we were going to unthaw for an hour and someone pointed out that unthawing is actually staying frozen i should have saying i should have said thaw out for an hour I said unthaw. Yeah, unthaw sounds Not right odd. for some reason. Unthaw totally sounds why, right. Why does it sound I'm right? I'm a writer. I totally didn't catch that. Yeah, I would gladly unthaw with you. Yeah, I, I would isn't it weird? It. That's sad. I'd do it in a heartbeat. I just, I would never have caught that. Isn't that funny? That's really strange. It's pretty hmm. strange. This mic sounds funny today. I'm going to just... There. Yeah, I fixed the... it to you. Let me talk about the whole crossity. What was that? That was speaking in a foreign tongue. No. Yes, but of course you Try it. It's fun. So I was telling Courtney and Christina before we came on air <clears throat> that I'm this sort of paranoid person who I do most of my worrying in the middle of the night. I'm jolted bolt upright in bed usually by something I've left undone or some terrifying thing that I that I need to worry about. Always at three o'clock. And I freaked out this week because I remembered that Christina and I had turned on the lava lamp here in the studio last week. Jeez. And then it's so slow and boring that we didn't even notice it. 
and it's always it it's hot too. So I panicked all week thinking that that lava lamp was on at night or whatever, yeah. and that the studio mm. would catch on fire because because we left the lava lamp on. I actually thought of it too, but the difference is that I thought of it and I just let it go. Huh. I didn't stay up at night. Well, thinking about if it. If I thought of it in the middle of the day, I would have said, "Oh my god, don't be ridiculous. That, somebody has seen it and somebody has shut it off." I guess we should never ever use the lava lamp. I guess we should. I can't we can't be trusted with that lava no, lamp. No, we can't. I just I don't know what could we be trusted with? Maybe a radio uh, show, I don't know. Maybe not that either. Ooh, the door says secretly opening without really any weird. human Oh, I think contact. it's because Courtney and her little tribe just left. So the it vacuum. Was airflow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's really dusty. It's really dusty in here. They must have vacuumed. Oh, my God. It gets worse. I think after Courtney they... does vacuum sometimes. She does. It kicks up a lot of dust. She's a lot more domestic yeah, than we are. She's great. She's yeah. so great. She plugged my album. My, that is true. My album. Album I produced. Yeah. That was nice of her. That was nice of her. Even yeah. without hearing it, she plugged it. Yeah. <laughs> she Even trusts better, you explicitly. Just plug, it. just plug it. Explicitly? Is that the right word to use there? <clears throat> Implicit. <clears throat> implicitly. Yes, she implied not that, explicitly. It was, that it was a fantastic thing. <laughs> she does not trust well, you there, explicitly. There actually, that would be I weird. Should, there is one explicit track. That oh. you, you couldn't play for FCC reasons, and I should probably put up a little sign to that effect. Like, please don't. Oh. Just um, what's the? Oh yeah, oh I know it's what the S word. About. No, it's the B word. That's okay. The B word's fine. It's really? the S word. That's not. Yes, think that of, seems dumb. I would switch that around. I would make the S word okay and the B word yeah, less okay. Yeah, because it's just like it's just manure. Yeah. Right? We could say I think manure. that was a swear word we were kind of allowed to say from childhood on because it's really pretty uh, descriptive in a lot of ways. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. In connection to like rubber boots and things like that. <clears throat> so. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yes. Because said, said by a farmer. Yeah. You're such a great farmer. I don't feel like a great farmer this week. Great. I'm feeling really bad. Our animals are so cold and I don't know what to do. We don't have power up at our stable. So, um, you know, other people who have horses are probably richer than us because usually when you have horses, you're rich because they are a huge money suck. And we're pretty much the only poor people I know that have horses. But since we don't have electricity, other you know, other people have like tank heaters or something to keep their water from freezing. And you have to with horses. If horses do not get water all the time they can colic and die it's very important but we have just got no way to keep their water from freezing so we're going up constantly mostly john like what, with an ice pick we just are refilling their waters like over and over how and over you, again all day how do you it get freezes that solid within like 20 minutes <clears throat> how, do you, how do you get the ice out um actually we have enough buckets to have double buckets for everybody so what we do is we haul all the frozen buckets down and we bring them into our mudroom in our house really? the only way to get the water the frozen ice out is to thaw it in our mudroom god that's a good workout and then for mostly john because <laughs> i just can't even function he's, outside he's strong for a, he is a, strong. a guy that's kind of wiry you know he's sort of wiry he is he is yeah, very he's, strong he's really really but, it's making me really worried. And then a bunch of people told me about these waterers that don't need electricity, which is great because I've been looking for something. We've looked for like solar heated waterers. We've done everything. Um, and my brother-in-law, who's a farrier, told me to get these bar, bar A automatic waterers. And then yeah. a vet friend of ours said, yes, get those. They're great. She said they're totally still flowing at negative uh, 20. And so I looked them up and like for one of these buckets, it's $500. 500 bucks. I was and close. I need, you know, yeah. I need at least like three to five of them. Oh, geez. So I, I am like, yeah, I actually probably will get one at some point or two or three, but not right now. It just was, I, I if I'd known that I, well, that I had to get do, these. Doesn't cost as much as a silo, for example. I mean, farmers right. have to go into debt. We don't debt. have any silos though. Yeah, but farmers have to go into debt. To just stay in business. And our sheep are fine. Sheep actually don't drink that much in I the winter. Ha- they eat snow, too. They love to eat snow. Great. I like but sheep. That's one of the reasons. Sheep are so low yeah. maintenance. But I have something that you're going to just totally love. What? Um, it's called uh, <clears throat> It's called a slow feed hay net. Oh, we have those, too. What do you mean you have that? We never use it, though. Why? Well... We don't have anybody who has real problems with bolting their hay, so we don't have one of but those. But this is recommended up. by the, the hay chicks. 
You know the hate chicks? No. <clears throat> These are, we have rivals. We have rivals out in Minnesota. The hay chicks. Do they have a radio show? They have a YouTube channel. About hay? Partly. I know all about hay. Well, you should, you don't, you should check this out because they might take over the universe. Not. Well, I'm here. It's the two of them. They sit and they talk very <gasps> earnestly about hay and, you know, self, your feelings of self-worth. Wow. They sound um, a little like us. They have the Hay Chicks channel, Beyond the Bail. <laughs> right. Anyway, look them up because they, they just, they're great. They say they... Uh, they I, I'm curious because I'm pretty well versed in hay at this point. They have a lot of recommendations that you'll like, hmm. like, um, like um, stop apologizing for everything is uh, one thing that yeah, they, I do that they a lot. recommend. I'm yeah. a huge apologist. Yeah. And, and it's okay to say no. That's another right. one. Yeah, that I know that, but it's not like happening really for me. And you don't have to do everything. Right. I also know that too. Again, not happening for me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so check it out. I feel sort of let down after Christmas is over. I know you do. You, look, you know how much I love Christmas. But you look happy. You I'm actually, fine. you look I'm like fine. you've had exactly, you've had a really good meal. Of a spiritual meal. Uh, not for breakfast. I just had, I had corn pops. Sorry. No, I, I said, admit it. I said spiritual meal. Oh. Like every your, time the I... sustenance of life, that kind of meal. Oh. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I about. guess so. It was a good week, except for everybody's like kind of vaguely sick, but it's not really sick. It's like, it's like sugar you, hungover You're missing my tired. drift. You're missing, my drift is about love. Yeah. No, there was lots of love. And everybody I, was lovey this week. I wanted to tell you something. I wanted to start the show with an idea. Okay. Okay, ready? Yeah. Everyone is beautiful <laughs> in their own way. You missed a word in their own special way. That's a Michael Jackson song, I think. <laughs> no, Everyone it's is not beautiful Michael in their own Jackson. special way. Who is it? Shh. Who is it? <clears throat> is it? It's not Barry it's Manilow, beautiful. is it? In their Barry own Manilow. special way. I can't even think of the harmony. Uh, I can't even think of how the melody goes. Everything um, is beautiful. In its own way. Its own special some, way. I know special's in there. Uh, you know, people might interpret the song differently and sing it in different ways. Did you say Barry Manilow? I did. I can not hear, Barry. I, can I, start, can, I don't know who sings it, but I can. I can't really hear it in my head because I'm not picking up the the tune of it. But well, just could you just I repeat those, it? Could you repeat that? Everyone is beautiful in their own special way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's for 2018 can't believe it's going to be 2018. I'm still messing up writing 2017. I still keep writing 2016. What's going to happen when I get to 18? You're going to have a bologna like, sandwich. Oh, I haven't had bologna in a long time, Christina. I actually decided this week, and this is not a resolution, a New Year's resolution, because I don't really do those. <clears throat> You're going to be happy about this one. I think yeah. I'm done with meat. Really? Yeah. Cool. I don't really like meat. Right. I never really have. Of course you don't. But I have a huge, huge iron deficiency, so I do make myself, and I'm super lazy also, so I don't like to be like, oh, I'm going to be one of those crazy people who looks up all the special vegetarian ways to get iron. Like, it's just hard. I don't want to eat beans and stuff all the time. So I just, like, every once in a while, I eat some meat because it's easier, and I'm lazy, and I have to have iron or else I, like, pass out. Well, so yes. But iron tincture. You know what though? I'm. I probably won't ever give up chicken. I'm that. Does that count though? Chicken. Yeah. <laughs> as an animal. Yes. I mean, no. I know it counts as an animal. Is it meat? Yes. No, I know it's meat. Does it I have feathers? Like... <laughs> yes. Does it fly? Yes. Does it like scratch? Yes. I still. I don't. I don't actually like the taste of meat, so it's easy to give it up. But chicken, I do. Does like the it taste have of. a personality? Yes. Some, sometimes. Check. Does it have love in its I heart? I have grudges against yes. a lot of chickens because I've been harmed by chickens. So I, I feel like really vindictive when I eat chickens. Yeah, but you shouldn't hate a chicken. I don't hate them. Because it's... I'm, a, not, it's I'm just, not eating them because I hate them. It's being a chicken. It should be okay for a chicken to be a chicken and not have like you hate it. Hey, just for do doing... no harm, chickens. And they, har they have harmed me before. I thought you were going to speak to yourself and say do no harm. No, I'm not going to harm... Um, four leg anything with four legs. But two, what do you consider a chicken? A four legged or two? Christina, it's got four. chickens don't have four legs. What do you call two wings? Those are Those arms. Aren't legs. Those are arms. No, they arms don't, count not on as the legs. Arms. arms do not count as legs. Yes. They're definitely two legged. 
<laughs> You're all oh my god, up. have you been going around telling go. people that chickens have four legs? Sort of. Jeez. There's nothing wrong with that. People can have different The good thing is I don't like facts. fish either. I, I don't I don't feel really empathetic. I just have different fish. facts. I feel <laughs> alternative facts. I haven't yeah. heard that expression for a couple I'm weeks. I'm trying to find my pen. I need my pen. I it's, can't function. It's, it's next to your. It's oh, next to your recording thing. Thank then. you, God. I was just going to go you, crazy you if I can. Don't hold. lose that pen. That's your special pen. Somebody had admired this pen. I heard him admire that pen. Oh, it was John. No, it John? wasn't. It was Who? Brian Pfeiffer. Oh, he said he liked my pen, my big pen. It's okay, maybe a, more than like one a, person has admired your pen this week. No, but. it's the 1.6 mm. I know that you're very attached to it. Like you've been. It's not just an it. Sorry. It's got four legs. <laughs> it doesn't have. No, a I'm. I was kidding. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Uh, but I do get them by the box. Wow. So I get when you say, "Oh, that's your pen." I mean, it's like yes, it's that's, one of your pen family pens. Yes, because I have a whole box. Of the, you know, with extra backup boxes. I see that you're not a cap person, though. You don't like to keep the pen with its well, cap. Don't you end up with a, like all the caps are just in a basket? Um, like I, I like my OCD prevents me from taking the cap off for very long. I with put a, it right with a back ballpoint on. pen, it's different than a felt tip. Of course, you put the top on the felt tip pen, but the this kind of pen, if you're gonna put it in your purse, maybe that's. That's the only reason I would Where'd put a top have, You had on that it. one behind your ear Yeah, when I mean, you came in. That's what I want to do, like this. Wow. Does that look cool? It kind of looks cool. I've never been able to pull <laughs> that off. My ears aren't shaped right for holding pens. They just fall out. Huh. Okay. Well, don't worry, because every, <laughs> everyone is beautiful in their own special way, so I think you're going to be fine. All right. I know it's so, true. It's totally true. Tell me. What? That everyone is beautiful oh, in their own special right. way. Yes, you just can't I, I know that's say true you too. can't say it too many times. <clears throat> you know, you can't, I just yeah, it's it like gets... it's like those little porta potties in Tunbridge that have the little hats of snow. It's just like warms your heart. And the two gas pumps that are no longer functional at the Tunbridge store, North Tunbridge, no longer functional. The whole store is not functional. Yeah, yeah. but don't you kind of just you drive through town? You just sort of have this feeling like, wow, people once. Throve here, Thro- <laughs> throved, thrived. thrived. I don't think thrived is a good yeah I, version of thrive. As much as I love my town, it is really not thriving lately. What is thriving? What's thriving? We don't have think any commerce. Something. None. No commerce. Whatsoever. Yeah, but rather than focus on the negative, let's focus on the positive. Like, what is thriving? Not about Tunbridge. Just forget I don't, that. I, a but. sense of community, and I feel without town public places where people can gather. Then I feel a community doesn't thrive it's so well. It's too cold to gather. No, I know right now. Nobody gathers now. But, you know, other times of the year. You know, I have something a lot to say. Of, what? There's a lot of fighting over the schools and consolidation yeah. and this and that. So people are really kind of, I feel like they're torn apart in a way that they haven't been so much before. When I was growing up, I felt a lot of solidarity with my town. And now I feel like everyone's mad at everyone else all the time. And mm. I've never had that feeling in our town. Our town is a very, very friendly little town. Yeah. Okay, what? Well, I just, I while you were talking, I was listening you didn't have to. It's okay. No, I was, but I was also feeling like moved to sing for a second. <laughs> what were you going to sing? Negative six. <laughs> <laughs> I like this new exercise of your opera. It is. Outbursts it helps, it now helps and then. me release energy, just like <laughs> radiators. It was way lower than negative six, Christina. Well, it was negative 10 when I went to bed. What was it at? This morning. I don't... I think it was negative 10 when I got up. Usually there's some variation between night and morning, but... I feel like it was negative 16 or something around those light. Yeah, uh, it's actually warmer. But then it warmed up. It's warmer at the top of the hill and temperatures. Like, you go down into Chelsea, down. Yeah, sometimes you, we It's find colder. That it's colder in the hollow because that coldness just settles down in there. Down it's, like, there. terrifying. But it's not always true because we have more wind on our hill. We are very windy where we are. So even when the temperature technically isn't as low, the wind chill makes okay, it feel... Okay, if it's, if it's windy. It's bad windy. I hear you. Always. I hear you. Oh, gosh. Nice in the summer when it's... Because we don't really have bugs. They get blown away, but... Yeah, people don't believe that but it really happens that yeah, bugs happens. get blown away they, do. they don't in like from, to be in windy certain parts of vermont b- bugs just don't yeah. there there aren't any bugs except the ones that can stick 
to the ground. Yeah, I mean, we have a certain amount of, like, barn flies near the barn. Yeah, but they kind of stay close to animals and yeah. such, so they yep. can grip when the wind blows. And, of course, you know, ticks will stick to anything. I think they're dead now. That's the one good thing about this. Kind of. I, I they're think sort that of, they're kind of dead. Be- I don't believe they really We haven't had a stretch really die. that is as long and as cold as this one for a while. I mean, it's, I mean... It's going to be cold. Yeah, for but another ticks, week or so. ticks kind of transcend physical reality. I know, but I'm really thinking that this might. What is that? Is that my car? What? Is my. I don't think your car is going doing donuts anywhere. in the parking lot? I don't think so. No, I didn't park my car. You they know, just dropped I just, me. I, would, I just want to go back to last week, something you said okay. last week that I thought was really cool. Um,. I said something cool? Yeah, you used the word Christmas as a verb. You said, uh, yeah, I Christmas hard. Remember that? I, yeah. And that yeah. it just went by super fast, but I thought it was really cool. Did you Christmas hard this year? I so did. Oh, you so did. Yeah, yeah. And, um... Did you get presents? Yes. Like what? John is so spot on with presents, and I always feel bad because I'm, like... We are usually doing our Christmas shopping together, so I don't ever have time to get him something where he's not with me. So finally, he was literally with me in Home Depot, and I said, I'm just buying you a power tool, okay? And I said, pretend you don't see this. Well, I bought him his angle grinder and replacement blades or whatever. Good for you. And then I wrapped it up, and I said, just whatever. Yeah. But he's always good at surprising people. So what did you get? I asked you internet. what you got. Oh, he got me... You know how I never buy jeans brand new? I always buy them at the thrift store. So it's kind of hard to find the perfect fitting jeans when you're just going through thrift store choices. But I finally, yeah. eventually, once found the perfect pair of Levi's that fit exactly as I want them to. And I wear them nonstop, like every day, all the time. And they're starting to get, like, not not cool anymore because I wear them too much. And it really hurts me to pay real prices for jeans because jeans are dang expensive. Yes, yes. I mean, yes. it's because it's the go-to piece of clothing for all americans but john went to my favorite jeans and he like looked up the model and maker and everything and he ordered me two pairs of brand new of my favorite wow. jeans which was so nice that's so cool and he got me some marameco uh, a skirt and pants too wow and a weird little shadow box of two little cupie dolls kissing okay from like the 40s nice i think that's what they were doing <laughs> it's hard to tell with cupie dolls Want to know what I got? What? It's a short list. Okay. Okay, I got a mixtape from (gasps) Bob. I'm just. I I am just still. You have a mixtape still coming for me, but I have to wait until my computer is like, or not my computer, until a computer with music is functioning at my. Okay. Well, I'm just going to say first names to protect the names of the innocent. Okay. Okay. So mixtape from Bob, which is something that he does every year, which is really cool. Um, I got two photos from James in British Columbia. That's all you're going to know about him. What kind of photos? Water. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I had it. He put a couple of photos on Facebook and this one of like the top, just as you're going over a waterfall. Ooh, scary. It's so beautiful. It's just the light is so beautiful. And he actually framed them and sent. That's so nice. That, that was James. Uh, let's see. I got a box of sweets from Italy. Ooh. And I got grass clippers and I got uh, loppers from my kids. Oh, God. Speaking of that, I have something for you, and it's at home. And okay. It's not wrapped. Well, I got it. a bright you present. But it's along but... those this exact same lines of the last two things you just said. Really? Yeah. But... Well, good. I might, you know, the grass clippers, he knew that I wasn't really big on grass clippers. Cause, it's not grass clippers. Because I use scissors. I like scissors. It's just, it's just in the gardening, like, department. Okay. Well, I might take the grass clippers back. I'm not sure. They're really nice ones, but mm-hmm. I just don't like grass clippers. Are they the kind that have the spring and the handle yes. kind of up above? Yeah. They Those act- make my hand tired. That's it. And if you're a gardener, you just, you, they're inefficient. So anyway, so got that. Uh, but he said he gave me the the uh, receipt to take it back to Abishans in Montpelier, so I can I can trade them for something else. Nice. Uh, I got two books. One called The Song of Trees, and the other called The Ridge The River of Consciousness. And I got two hundred dollars from Ooh. my stepmother. Well, that's nice. That's it. That's a not a bad haul though. That's as a, as an adult, my mom. 
once when I was a teenager, to kind of forgot my birthday until the last second. And so she just got quick some like socks and soap for me. And I guess I, I'm not a present complainer. I don't really care what I get. But um, I guess I must have complained because now it's the joke thing that she always gives me socks and soap. So I got socks and soap from my mother for Christmas. Yeah. yeah in a certain sense, you can't go wrong because you're always no. going to enjoy that. You can go wrong with soap. But you use it up. No. What? I do not use soap that has any stink to it. Really? Like scented soaps? Yeah. I, I have really horrible crappy skin. So if I wear soaps with perfumes or put anything like that on my body, I just oh. like break out immediately. So I don't do any soaps that have scent in them. But I like to sniff them. Okay. I like to leave them in their paper and just sniff them. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. I like how they smell in the bathroom. It's funny because I can't deal with scented candles at all. I hate the way they smell. Mm-hmm. But scented soaps have a cleaner, purer smell. Yeah, depends where they come from, but yeah. um, I think it's time for a song. Oh, okay. It what? certainly is. Are you going to put on first? Well, I thought we were going to try to talk about this topic possibly before we got to the song, but I think I'm just going to play the song, and then if we get to the topic, that's fine. Okay. All right. It's called Forgiveness. Ooh. Sweet 
grass grows on the highways of the wind. Let me bring you to our life. You can lay your burden down. There's no need to carry on. We can lie here on the ground. Only sky and clouds and sun and the earth beneath our backs and the love that we have shared isn't that forgiveness forgiveness Fade, 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 because it's a long song. I just would rather You're talk just to cutting you. it off. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's my song. <laughs> I guess you. I get to. I get to get fade to cut it. it off if you want. Fade it twice. So it's my party, and I'll cry if I want That's to. That's right. Fade, it's fade my it song, and I'll fade, fade it out it if I want to. I should. I'm going to open my Christmas present from you now. Here. Okay. All right. Okay. And by the way, this is the first time that we've successfully answered people who are talking to us on social media while we're doing the show. I think we're advancing and becoming really like slick, wow. slick. Uh, that was pretty slick. Podcaster of you. DJs. So thank you for everybody who's talking to us. Okay. It's very exciting. Wait. Okay, so she's opening. I'll, I'll do some crinkling. Yeah, I know this Christina is, likes crinkling. I've actually been telling her that I was going to give her a Christmas present for, I don't know, four or five years. <laughs> well, you say. You don't have to give me a Christmas present. I know, but I always have good intentions. And I say, well, oh, yeah, I've got this great idea. I'm going to give you a present. And then I don't. So this year, I finally I gotta, just. I got to scale back I, on my kids, I tell you. Well, I thought. Yeah, that or can all, that happens. All kids. That happens. But um, so tell us about the wrapping paper. Christina, you you gave me a Christmas present last year actually, and it was in the same wrapping paper. Really? Yeah, it's little cute tiny um, campers, like the little round campers, Camp, camper trailers, camper trailers on birch bark, and they have little Christmas trees on top of them. And I admired this paper last year. Wow, you went to town can, with the tape here. You can go lady. faster. Well, you don't want it to open spontaneously. I guess not. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh, this is a And now frame. the bubble wrap. Bubble wrap. I know, so this is going to take I... a while. So take a nap if you want to. We'll be back when she's got the... Oh, don't. <laughs> I just had to pop a few. Okay. Oh, my God. So I watched this YouTube video called... Um, you know how, like, when you see something super cute, you want to squeeze it? Yes, yeah, like Snarky Puppy. It was, it's this uh, actual phenomenon. It's called cuteness aggression that we have. And they gave people bubble wrap and they didn't tell them uh, just random test subjects. They gave them bubble wrap and they um, showed them a slideshow of things that got increasingly cuter. And they counted how many bubbles people popped for the cuteness of the picture on the slideshow. And people couldn't help themselves. Their hands just, cl when they saw the cutest, tiniest little puppies and things, they would pop m the most bubbles. Oh my and God. You know what that's like? Have what? you ever like wanted to bite something that was cute? Like your kids? Yes. You know? Their cheeks. Their yes, little fat round cheeks. Bite bite, them, bite, bite. But this is so pretty. Thanks. I didn't make it. That's, I know the guy who makes those prints. It's a print. I love it. It's a beautiful print of a little, of a, it's a black and white print of a little candle. Flame burning. And what does it say? Does darkness. it have a Latin something? A lumen motus, moved by light. There we go. I yes. love it. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. That's gorgeous. Yep. So, uh, so the, the most, speaking of Snarky Puppy. What is Snarky Puppy? It's a band. Oh, Skinny Puppy. No, Snarky Puppy. There's, puppy. A, there's a ska 
hip hop band called Skinny Puppy. No, it's, I know that this is a band because there's an ad that keeps coming up on my Facebook page, like ad nauseum, and I'm so sick of it. And it's for Snarky Puppy and David Crosby at Carnegie Hall. And I'm just done with it. You I know? don't. I know puppies those, are never snarky. Like how? Ever. How many times do you have to see that that's happening? Cats and, are snarky. And, puppies, no. Sorry. Well, maybe that's like these guys are probably from Brooklyn, and they think it's cool to say <sighs> snarky puppy because it's uh, kind of not possible. And they're not old enough even to remember skinny puppy. Yeah, me neither. I guess I don't know. Skinny puppy. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It was stupid. Don't worry. Yeah. So, for, uh, forgiveness, Ooh. personal growth. Let's grow. Do we have to grow so close to Christmas? You're in a good mood, and you're filled with love and joy <laughs> and light, and so this is a very good time to like expand on your consciousness, which is already opening All up right. like a beautiful flower. All right, hit me with it then. Okay, so it's never too late to become the person that you should have been. Emily, never too late. Okay. I thought you were talking about forgiveness. Well, we're going to get there. Oh. We're, we're going to go open the door. So, you know, before traumatic events shaped us and shut us down, before we became afraid of life, we can be that person, Emily. Somebody posted a meme recently that said, it's never too late and you're never too old. Which I liked, because I'm always worried that I'm getting too old for whatever it is. Yeah, it's sort of the pragmatic shortcut yeah. approach. Yeah. Are you afraid of life? Um, Generally, yes. Well, I don't know if I'm afraid of life. I'm afraid of all the things that can make life stop. Mm -hmm. Such as? Like? harm like to death. <laughs> myself and loved ones i'm yeah. afraid of trauma i'm afraid of encountering anything that is disruptive to the normal to, yeah daily i'm definitely routine. afraid of change i'm definitely afraid of um taking chances okay yeah that's understandable i'm afraid of myself i think more than anything and my thoughts i do really dumb things on occasion I just don't think things through. Well, so or I think too much. I yeah, I'm talking about actually what's going on in my head is the most dangerous thing that threatens my my well being. So you know it's that programming that's in there. Well, I don't trust myself in my head. I always think that I don't really know what I'm doing or talking about, so I don't give myself credit for anything. Mm -hmm. And I guess that is sort of scary. And whereas me, I'm a sort of human magnet for abuse and harassment. Well. That's kind of cool, huh? I am a little <laughs> bit with you, but I'm getting, I think I'm, I must be getting, either I just am lucky now. See, that's, that's what I think. Sometimes I'm like, no, I'm stronger now. I'm a better person. And that's why this stuff isn't happening to me. And it's actually probably not. It's actually luck. If, I don't know if I if I got myself out of a bad situation technically, or if I kind of lucked out of a bad situation once upon a time. Yeah. I guess it, I guess it doesn't really matter. Cause I don't feel strong and smart really most of the time. Yeah. So you didn't actively forgive yourself is what you're telling me. You just became no. a, like a, uh, you just see, cause I think for myself, there's an element of needing to forgive myself for being human you know, yeah. so it's more uh, that I have to shift my relationship to myself. And that's, you know, you might be good at forgiving other people or think you're good at forgiving other people. But I think you're sort of in denial if you haven't straightened that out with yourself. I had a dream recently, and I'm a very vivid dreamer. But I had a dream recently that someone who's grievously wronged me in the past, she, like, sort of understood finally what she'd done and 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 like apologized and we cried and hugged wow. and and I woke up feeling really kind of kind hearted toward this person even though I know actually in real life that will never happen like she really really thinks I'm a horrible wretched person and she's That's, right I but think it something kind of happens I it think it sort of lift a little yeah. weight off my mind because I've been going around just being super bitter that this person did really wrong by me and yet she's angry at me and treats me terribly and 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 just having her say she was sorry in my dream it sort of made me feel less bitter about it it's not gonna happen but 
but that's that's real. That's real. It actually happened in the dream and you felt it happening. So I can't, I don't want to, you know, think that sort of demote dreams into something that don't have the, you know, I know, but sometimes it's really disappointing when you wake up and, and, and you realize that your dream was such wishful thinking and like, it's I've a, been like completely heartbroken by dreams before. Just, right, but I would I would say that dreams are a touchstone because even if there's that sadness of seeing the dr- the the dream kind of move away from you and you're reaching out and you're trying to stay in contact with that really good feeling that you had and it's you know it's getting farther and farther out of reach at the same time it was a touchstone that is now a part of you it's part of your heart system. True. So yeah, I, you know, I was thinking about myself and sort of my inability to forgive myself. And I was thinking of another person that I was close to who always used to be so proud at his own ability to forgive people. But I swear he, you know, he was in complete, he was completely unaware, evidently, of how much he sort of hated himself and didn't forgive himself. And so all that forgiveness that he was kind of pouring out to the universe was just like for show. It just didn't add up to anything. Yeah, false. It was like a sense of superiority. Hmm. Very self-congratulatory. But, you know, these things, these are mechanisms that we create to hide from the things that we don't want to look at. So it's normal. I mean, what, you know, if I look at somebody else doing something like that, then I have to see how I kind of engage in the similar they say that the qualities that we hate the most in other people are the ones that we secretly hate the most in ourselves. I kind of, kind of buy that, and kind of don't. I know, me too. I think that there's more to it. It's a little more complex than that. Yeah, you know, because sometimes but there's got to be more, something to it. Well, sometimes there's an inverse relationship with some of that stuff. Yeah. What was that? Giant Jake. Breaks. That's a power tool downstairs. Somebody's using a big power tool. Are you tool. sure? It yes. sounds like a big truck no, the wood, going by. There's a wood shop right there. Yeah, but that sounded like Jake breaks. No, that was a power tool. I can't imagine tool. there's a big truck on this little tiny road, but maybe. No, it's absolutely a power tool. Okay, I believe you. <laughs> power tools. God, we got my oldest son a chainsaw for Christmas. It's very tiny. It's like a, a little. It's not that tiny. I saw it on Facebook. But it's like in a. It in, works. It has to be. In relation to other chainsaws. Has to be... It's like one of the smallest. Right. But chain, it's a chainsaw. Less dangerous chainsaws that you can get, but. He was pretty excited about a chainsaw. I was yeah. kind of iffy about. I was just going to say he was excited. You have to let your kids go through these, you know. These, I know, uh, and he's going to have all the safety gear and lessons and proper stuff. But it's just, it's, it's just, just like weird hunting. when your kid. I know, it's like seeing, seeing your kid have a gun. I just don't have interest in, and I have to be excited for them because they're so excited, or I have to like put aside some of my terror of all that dangerous things that are. Attached to the uh, object. I don't know. Uh, they also got uh, skateboards. I don't really barf. like skateboards either, but. Uh, oh, God, it's hard to be <laughs> parent children. Uh, but well, it was beautiful outside, though, even though everything is a little bit of a letdown after Christmas. and and. Yeah, but we have so many things to look forward to. Like, for example, it's time for our astrology check-in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, you should just. I have some astrology these... for you. The moon, Christina, has been very bright the last few nights. There. Yes. That's my. Yes. That's my okay. Ah, uh, there's something ast- astrological observation. Well, there's something about it, obviously, that spoke to you, no, Emily. It's just when I lay with my kids at night, it's right outside their window, and it's like a nightlight, and it's because it's so um, cold. I think. And the sky it must be so clear. That is satisfying. Even yeah. watching you to pop the bubble pack is very, I don't know. There's a satisfaction to it. I'm not even looking at puppies. You know what? Let's what? call that activity because there's no real adje- or adjective or verb for popping bubble pack, but we could just uh, say snarky puppy. It's kind of like OCD or something, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to call it snarky puppy feeling. All right. That's. Oh, God. Some. People, don't leave your dogs outside when it's this cold. Oh, I can't even people, deal. People. I don't like people who are like, dogs are animals. They're meant to be outside. Like, they're actually, nothing is meant to be. It depends. No life can be outside. It depends on the dog. 
Depends on the animal. I don't care really. what kind of dog you have. You like, know what? You very cleverly segued out of the astrology. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, information All that right. I was going to go, download. Go back to it. Okay. This is a download from the cosmos. We should call this section of the show Download from the Cosmos because now I'm channeling. And cosmos not as in Cosmo. What's Cosmo? The magazine? No. Which... If you ever look on their website, you can get all kinds of weird sexual tips like, did you know <laughs> Why? semen Why? can travel at speeds up to 28 miles per hour, <laughs> which is faster than women's rights on a good day. <laughs> all right. Go back to whatever interesting thing you were going to say. Oh, I've completely derailed. 28 miles an hour? That's too fast. I don't know if that's, that's faster just, than I thought or slower than Emily, I thought. That's just wrong. Didn't you always wonder how fast Team is even No, traveled? I never, ever, ever did. Shh, whatever. Okay. I don't know. I... Tell okay, me what so the anyways, stars say. Okay, this 2018. Could you stop? God. Why'd you give me bubble wrap if you didn't want me to pop it? Well, are you almost done? I'll, I'll save the rest save some for, for the next musical break. Okay, so this is the year. 2018 is the year of bridging from... Th- 3D to 5D. What's okay? 5D? Well, that's not a thing. Yes, it is. 5D, the fifth dimension. That's too complicated. It's right here. 5D is right here. It's a state of consciousness. It's a shift. It's where you claim your own authority over your life <sighs> at a deep spiritual level. Okay, so you stop looking outside yourself for solutions. Don't they tell to us your, to do that every year? Life. Yeah, but you have to really take this to heart. You know, it's part of forgiving yourself and connecting with part of yourself that really knows what to do and knows what's going on. I mean, no part of me knows what to do. Yes, it is. It's in there. I don't. I don't know. Shut up. (laughs) Shut up and listen. All right, 2018. Do your thing. Hey, it's time for another song. Oh, I can pop the rest of these bubbles. Yeah, you can. Okay. All right. What are you going to play though? Turn your mic off. It's called Star Trek. It's by my friend Risto's band in Finland. Here we go. Good segue from astrological yes. topics. <laughs>
That was Hillman Hunter. That's the name of that band. Heavy metal. Well, does that That's count? Not really, heavy, not really metal. heavy metal. Just a little. It's just, just a touch spir- of metal. Spirited Finnish rock and roll. Touch of metal. I really like it. I think Risto's a pop star. Cool. A rock star. That's awesome. He's he's great. Great guy. So, I, you know, I'm like through half my wood. We are too. Which is so depressing. I don't even... Last night was so cold that um, John got up in the middle of the night and kicked on our oil burner. And since we haven't used it for a while, the whole house was filled with like this gross sort of oily fumes for a little while. Ew. And then I couldn't sleep because I said, what if I fall asleep and we all get asphyxiated or whatever? You're just like me. I do that too. And then, so that was annoying and I couldn't sleep. And and add to that the lava lamp crisis. Yeah, that was several nights before the lava, that I woke up in the middle of the night terrified that Christina and I had left the lava lamp on in the studio. Yeah. And then a few nights, no, last, oh, last night was the, was the, um, the smell. The night before I realized, so I, the, the museum that I, that I run in the summer. Yeah. I'm. Obviously not the curator in the winter, but I am still the caretaker. So I go there every week or so just to check in and clean things and make sure everything's okay. And with all this cold weather and the holidays, I have not, I just completely forgot. I completely forgot that I need to go there and check. So through this bitter cold, who knows what kind of pipes exploded there. And I freaked out because the night before I woke up and I said, oh my God. It, I just totally spaced out and didn't even think about going to check on anything for the last week or so. It's scary. And, like, that's terrifying to me because it's a historic place. If I screw something up there, I'm like, I've really screwed up. So, yes, I better go and check on that later. I'd say you'd better go and check on yeah, that later. If the pipes or something burst in there, would be bad. Yeah. No, we were just saying how scary it it can feel at this t- these temperatures. Yeah. Like, uh, last night, I was I had my wood stove just blazing, and I could, I could still, regardless, I could feel floods of cold air, drafts of cold air, just like, yep. they, were, they, they just come right through the walls and just come into the house. And you're just feeling like, wow, this is actually scary. Yeah. In our old house, any electrical outlet, there's cold air blowing from the electrical outlets, any window, any sill of anything. Yeah. It's very bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's funny because the kids and I have been reading all the Little House on the Prairie books again. I read yeah. them to them all years ago, but Ira had to do some for school recently. So while we were on it, we just kind of went through the whole series again. And I'm reading these books of ridiculousness of people lost in blizzards and right. you know tying right. yeah. tying ropes from their house just to just to find their way to the barn to feed their cows and stuff. And I'm like, what the heck? Why are people even what what? How are they, how they even live through this? Like the, the pot yes. goes off and he's gone for days and the, you know, there's terrible weather things that happen with the ma and the children left at home. But it, it actually right now in Vermont feels kind of like that. Right. Like scary. Like so, we're not in control anymore at here, all. Here's the an- antidote. What? Um, you know how I hate guided visualizations, but there is one that I think we could all try when it's this cold. Okay. It's uh. It's a school of manatees. Just to try to envision a school of manatees. Yes, I okay, love, you can. Clo- I love manatees. Yeah, clo- you can close okay. your eyes just for a sec. I'll, okay, school of manatees swimming through clear, shallow water, and you can see them. Tropical, right? Not like clear, shallow water that's cold. No, it's like Florida. It's, it's like super turquoise water. It can't yeah. be that clear. It has and to be a, a little ma- tinted blue. And imagine the whole little house on the prairie just lifting up and landing in Florida. Oh. Or I think Florida's going to fall off the face of the earth soon, so let's uh, don't not worry lift about them that there. Now. Let's just not worry about that. Why is it sticking out like that? What, it's like Florida? a pokey out piece of... A pokey out of piece of... earth. Like, it's just dumb. I mean, you just... God needs a little cleaver and just go... Whoosh, there, it's off into the ocean. Yeah, well, Vermont... Out, if If you, you know, Vermont's dumb, all too. the continents are just going to be kind of, like, round. Because, you know, all the edges are going to get smoothed off by the... By you know water and temp and 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 um, tornadoes and things. Well, we will take the we will be saved because the John Lennon educational bus will come and pick us up <laughs> <laughs> when the oceans rise. The John Lennon educational bus. I'm, I'm bringing this up because I applied for a job 
What? With the John Lennon education bus last night. Well, I was panicking because I'm running out of money. So I said, I, I got to get we a job. Too. Money and wood yeah, are getting so, really low right now. Well, I'm thinking, well, what can I do? I can't be a bus boy anymore or a, like, a, like a ditch digger. It's just not don't make enough per hour. So I said, well, what do you know how to do? You're a recording engineer. So I said, let me go to LinkedIn and Google some jobs. She's on. I haven't even looked at my LinkedIn account. In yeah, a long try it. Time. There's actually jobs there, and I got this tons of jobs. And I just said, "What the heck, world? Do a worldwide search, you know?" And the John Lennon Educational Bus came up, and it's this thing that it's a nonprofit mobile recording unit dedicated to providing students of all ages with free hands-on opportunities. Do I sound like an ad? No, <laughs> uh, I know you're good to That's make music. Good. And That's produce fun. produce video projects and stuff. So. That sounds really social, though. Yeah, and it goes all around the United States, this big bus. I've you seen it. you have to drive it? No, they have drivers. You just have to be a recording engineer, and you have to, like, write song, know how to write a song. That could be fun. You know, it's a small skill set. I know. You know what I'm saying? I could not do that. Yeah, you know what? LinkedIn's not going to suggest any jobs for me. Yes, they will. No, my writer. skill set is like way smaller I than yours. Applied, I applied. I applied. Weirder. No, I applied to write on, uh, you know, music tech for Isotope plugins. I can't. Nothing ever comes up for my writing stuff on LinkedIn because there's so many writers. You have to narrow. Already. You have to search properly. You have to narrow your search. I guess. Yeah, because then you get sp- more specific about what you have in particular, like you know, like like the hey chicks historians stuff. Nobody even likes history anymore, which is really crummy. Oh, Am I the only person who likes history? No, it's really weird. Like, there's a lot of people who like history. You just haven't met them. You need to get the. Not, you, know, you need to get the the random events app. What? <laughs> it's, this, it's this great new app. I don't have any apps. I don't even know how to have apps. Yeah, but you could have an app. You are the you only person find, who's given me could, an app on my could, phone. You could go to the Serbian Association of New York. I'm not going to Serbia. Or the Ben Franklin Club. What? Or you could go Wait, to like... I can't even uh, find the one app you gave me. You could, Where is it? You could go to like a three-hour workshop to become a certified TNR caretaker. Do you know what that is? No. It's when you learn how to trap feral cats. You don't have to learn that. You yes, just, you do. You have to learn how to do it properly. That's silly. We have three minutes until we're off what? the air. I, never mind. You didn't put an app on my phone. I thought you put an app on my phone. No, I'm just saying I will. I put an app on your app phone. To how me, can I app to me, app in my app mind means phone? appetizer. Like, I don't understand this. I don't understand. I'm, I'm gonna, sorry. I'm going to explain it to you after the show's over okay i found and anybody else who has I, it problem, wasn't an app you just did any, the podcast anybody who just me. doesn't really know what an app is please contact me <laughs> <laughs> all right so you've been listening to 11th hour radio uh, on royalton community radio good and job we're yeah, gonna do the right thing and we've got some sponsors we've yeah. got the tunbridge grease collective mountain folk and howvale farms and we thank them very much for supporting the station and supporting us so we can do this and uh please look up our podcast on apple itunes uh or apple Podcasts. i guess is what it's called i thought it is uh, it is itunes but it's no it's, they call it apple Podcasts. is no the category under itunes no you could find it under itunes but really they, they're trying to switch people over to looking oh, at it why are they confusing people now when it's our time to put our podcast out now they're going to confuse people okay we need to get unconfused so we don't continue to i think app is appetizers people. i think we are not going to get unconfused anytime right, that's soon. just not going to change is it no okay that's fine i love you the way you are because you, you are special and beautiful just the way you are <laughs> You're beautiful. Hey, Ray Stevens. So thanks for listening. And uh, thanks, we'll, you guys. we'll be back in 2018. Have a very, very happy new year. Don't. Yeah. Did we tell people not to drink and drive last time? But then we changed it up and said, just. Just drink. We told people to drink. Right. So you can drink if you want. Drink, sure. Drink anything. Yeah. Orange juice. All okay. right, you guys. See you next week. Bye. Bye.